Hello, my name's Julian Edgar and I'm the author of the book you see in front of you, Car Electrical and Electronic Systems. What I want to do in today's video is cover some of the basics of circuits. It's the sort of stuff that if you don't understand, you're never going to be able to work with car electrical or electronic systems. You'll always make basic mistakes. So it's not the most exciting video in the world, but it's an absolute foundation if you are to succeed in this area. Let's start off with a really, really basic circuit so we can get some ideas. Down the bottom here, we've got a battery, a normal car battery, positive terminal, negative terminal, wire that connects to a light, wire that connects therefore back to the negative terminal. So it's a circuit. See how it's like a circle. Now in this case, the light will be illuminated. That's why it shows it yellow. So we've got our first circuit to look at. Now, what happens if we put a break in the circuit? Well, we can see the light goes off. So for the circuit to function, it's easiest to think of electricity traveling from the positive terminal, uh, in this case, if it, that break were closed, through the load and then back to the negative terminal. And with any break in that circuit, the light in this case, or the load will not function. Now, in cars, often the circuit looks incomplete. We have uh, the load connected to the positive side, but the other side of the load is just connected to the ground. In other words, to the metal work of the car. But because the metal work in turn is connected to the negative terminal of the battery, negative ground, it acts as a complete circuit. So let's follow the circuit. Electricity goes from the positive terminal through the load to the metal work of the car, which is then connected back to the negative terminal. Now we can wire loads in different ways. These loads, these two lights, are wired in series. Series one after the other. So the electricity travels from the positive terminal through the first load and then through the second load and then back to ground, back to the negative terminal. In this sort of circuit, if we put a brake anywhere in the circuit, then the both loads go off because the circuit is broken and the circuit needs to be complete for both loads to actually work. Now this is a different sort of circuit. This is what's called a parallel circuit. And it's easy to remember if you think of these wires here being in parallel to each other. Now, have a look at how this circuit works, because there's really two separate circuits. Here, electricity travels from the positive, goes through the load, goes back to the negative. That turns that light on. Here, electricity travels from the positive, goes through the other load, the other light, and then back to the negative terminal. So this is a parallel circuit, quite different to the previous one, which was a series circuit. Let's go back to that parallel circuit, and let's look at how else it can be wired, because this is more common. Here we have a positive lead here and a negative lead here, and you can see that the circuit electrically is just the same as the previous one. Power electricity goes through this load and back to ground, goes through this load and back to ground. Now series and parallel circuits are very important in every single aspect of car, electrical and electronic systems, going right up to the most complex engine management systems. Well, what's a short circuit then? Well, a short circuit is a shortcut. The electricity can flow straight from the positive through to the negative. Now, in this case, the light will be off because the electricity is going to take the path of lowest resistance, the easiest route, and that's going to be going straight from one to the other. Now, because a battery can supply an awful lot of current, it's very likely this would create a fire. This wire or these wires here would be red hot very, very quickly and then burn out, if not do something worse. So to avoid that, we use a fuse. Now this circuit puts into account or into effect almost everything we've been talking about. We have a 12 volt feed at one end, connecting to the positive terminal of the battery. The other end of the circuit is grounded, and we know that therefore the battery is in between those two connections. Electricity flows from the positive terminal of the battery through a fuse. A fuse is just a little thin piece of wire that'll burn out if too much current, too much electricity flows through it through a switch, which is closed, and then to a parallel circuit of the two lights. So in this simple one here, we've got the concept of a ground, we've got the concept of a fuse, the concept of a switch, which simply opens and closes a break in the circuit, and we have in this case a parallel circuit. Now, final one for this video, and it's a very, very important one. 
there is a mathematical relationship between a lot of the things that we've been describing. Battery voltage, the amount of current that flows in the circuit, the amount of electricity that flows, and a resistor, a resistance. So here we've got a 12 volt battery, we've got a three ohm resistor, just think of it as a blockage to electricity supply. Ohms are a measure of resistance and we have four amps. Now have a look, there's some mathematical relationship, isn't there? 12 volts divided by four, ohm, four amps means there must be three ohms resistance in the circuit. Or 12 volts divided by three ohms means four amps must be flowing. Or the final relationship, four amps times three ohms means there must be 12 volts to push the electricity along. Now, this is called Ohm's law. You don't have to memorize those relationships, but what is really, really important to know and to always remember is that there is a strict relationship between the voltage available in the system, the DC voltage, the amount of current that will flow and the resistance that's being posed to that current. That was pretty quick but they are absolutely fundamental. Series circuits, parallel circuits, uh, grounds in cars, and the relationship between resistance in, in ohms, current in amps, and voltage uh, in, in measured obviously in volts. It's covered in chapter one of the book, Car Electrical and Electronic Systems. I start with the absolute fundamentals and go all the way through to quite complex systems, engine management systems, and so on as the book proceeds. My name's Julian Edgar, thank you.